Hi, this is Renan Joran from Sophist. I'm going to cover the most common compliance requirements for selling an electromechanical product in the USA and the EU. In this module, I'm going to focus on chemical requirements, in other words, restricted and prohibited substances. Okay, so why is this important? When you put a product on the market, you need to make sure it's safe for users. You don't want it to cause cancer if people are frequently in contact with the product, for example. Okay, this is especially true for children. They are particularly vulnerable. Okay, they tend to take products, put them in their mouth, etc., etc. But it's also uh, important for adults, for, for everybody. Okay. Uh, it's not just about the user safety, it's also about the safety of people who are exposed to potentially uh, hazardous chemicals during the production and warehousing and transportation and so on of the product all along the supply chain, uh, including, you know, when it goes to landfill, when it's recycled or burned and things like that. Okay, there's also um, considerations about environmental protection. So let's take just two simple examples. What are we talking about? We're talking about very often, we're talking about these types of substances. And these little drawings come from a campaign by Greenpeace a few years ago. Uh, the phthalates, okay, very common um, additive um, to make plastics feel a bit so, uh, yeah, softer. Uh, and then uh, cadmium is a, is a heavy metal, and you will see it sometimes uh, when a coating has to be a certain bright color and so, and so on. And then it, it, there's all kinds of, of issues with these uh, these substances. You don't want them in, in high proportion in, in your products, basically. Okay, so let's go into the regulations. Uh, this one is about the EU and UK at the time of recording of this uh, video anyway, uh, REACH. And REACH is a relatively comprehensive regulation that, that has a long list of restricted substances. Okay, all products sold in, sold in the EU and the UK are, are concerned, virtually all products. Okay, so you should try to see, okay, this product include these types of materials, it's used by children or not, is this in, is, um, what are the, the, the risky substances, right? The hazardous substances that might be uh, in the product, and and then uh, testing uh, testing actually is a must. Now it doesn't say testing by such and such accredited bodies, uh, t testing labs or anything, but testing and you need to keep the data, right? So let's go into it. So I, I see this long list of restricted substances. Let's go through uh, the two main uh, the, the the two lists that are really important to uh, to be familiar with. The first one is SVHC. Actually, it's not very long. It's about two hundred chemicals. Uh, substances of very high concern, okay, uh, likely to cause cancer, reproductive trouble, and other health issues. And if one of these chemicals, one or more of these chemicals in, is present in a proportion above 0.1% of the weight of at least one of the component, okay, so all the components need to be analyzed separately. If the proportion is above 0.1% of on at least one component, then the whole product basically falls under uh, a, an obligation of declaration. Okay, so uh, if you are somewhere in the supply chain, your product uh, falls under this obligation, you must have, you must do a written declaration to your customer, and then your customer should do it to their own customer, and so on and so forth. Okay, it is not going to block the sale of the product, but it it is a must, okay? Your customers must be made aware of this. Now, let's go into the other much longer list, which is in Annex 17 of the REACH regulation. And uh, there's different limits and different logics, actually. You really need to go through the list and try to understand uh, the, the, the logics. But basically, if a certain chemical, okay, let's say chemical X is in proportion that is above the limit that is given to that, that that chemical or any one component of the product, then that product cannot be sold, cannot be put on the market in the EU or in the UK. Okay, so the other one, SVHC, compulsory declaration to your customers uh, and from your suppliers if you bought that, you know, that, that component in question from your supplier. Uh, Annex 17, forbidden, cannot be sold in the EU. 
Okay, so that that's that's very important. Now, a few frequently asked questions: uh, Can you get your products rich certified? No. Uh, is it linked to C marking? No, it's not under C marking. Uh, and um, do they force you to use certain labs that are accredited? No. Okay. Now let's go to another one, Ross. So you can see here CE. So this one is under CE marking. Okay. It applies to all electrical and electronic products sold in the EU and UK. And also uh, like California, the state of California, and also in, in, in various forms in a few other states in the USA, but also uh, in other places like Japan and so on. Okay, but this is pre predominantly EU. Here I'm going to talk about ROS in the EU. Okay, so it's a must, again, to, 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 to assess if there's a risk. Okay, testing is good, uh, but can you test all of your products and all the components of all your products for these 10 substances? Maybe not, so you need to do a risk analysis. And uh, if, if you work with pretty serious suppliers that have a strong track record, uh, then you, you, you may make the call and decide not to test in those cases. So it's a directive from 2011. It, uh, it currently lists 10 substances. It might go up to 12 soon. So you can see there's four heavy metals, lead, cadmium, carb cad uh, mercury, and uh, chromium-6 and six other substances, including phthalates. Okay, several of them are phthalates. Okay, the restriction is 0.1% in weight of, again, every component, except for cadmium, 0.01%. Uh, There's an IEC standard that shows exactly how to do this. And the percentage is the weight of what they call each homogeneous material, means that you cannot mechanically separate them further. Okay. But the requirement again is at the level of every separate component. FAQ again, can a product be ROS certified? No. Uh, link to C marking? Yes. When it's put on the market, if it's electrical or electronic, uh, th there has to be a C marking on the product and a declaration of conformity and so on and so forth. ROS logo? Sometimes we see, we see some ROS logos. No, actually don't do that. It's going to call the attention of market surveillance authorities. They're going to say these people, they don't really know what they're doing. Uh, so it's not advised. And um, accredited testing lab? No, actually it's not even a must to do testing. However, you get to make sure you, you do a proper risk analysis and you, uh, you, 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 you don't take... Um, uh, uh, risk where you should not. Okay, now next one in the USA, California Prop 65. So if you sell product in the USA, any kind of product basically, and if you sell in the state of California, it will, it will uh, fall under this uh, state law. And what happens is that if one of the substances that they list is above the limit that they provide you, you can still sell the product in this case, you have to put a big warning on the product saying, hey, this, this product uh, is hazardous to health. Okay, there's an exception for small companies. If your company is, let's say, five employees and you, you sell directly to the public and no big company is involved, then uh, you don't need to bother with this. Okay, can a product be uh, certified to Prop 65? No. And uh, this is the kind of warning label. So this product can expose you to chemicals known to cause cancer and birth defect, for example, right? This is an example. And very often in, in English and Spanish. Okay, and that's it for this video. I hope that this was helpful. Again, this was only about chemical uh, restrictions, only the most common ones, and only for the USA and the EU.